Colossians 3 and look with me at verse number 15. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Psalm 100 and verse number 4 says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. We'll study tonight for a little bit on that subject. Be thankful. Be thankful. Father, we ask your blessing upon the study of your word now tonight. Uh, thank you, Lord, for the Bible. We're thanking you tonight, God, that we have copies of your word in our language before us tonight. And Lord, we're, we're mindful this evening as we heard from Ruth and we saw the pictures, uh, how grateful we need to be and how appreciative uh, that without our choosing at all, you had us born here. And you had us no English. And you gave us the word of God in the English language. So Lord, we're, we're very aware of that wonderful, wonderful honor and privilege. And I pray that each of us would give our careful attention to your word now this evening. Uh, give us what we need from the word of God tonight. Spirit of God, teach us. Give us all ears to hear what you would say to each of us this evening. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Be ye thankful. I read about a young Scottish young man who moved from his home and established himself in a town far enough away that his mother had to phone him rather than visit him. She was concerned about him, so she called to see how he's doing. He said, well, I'm fine, but there's some very, I think, unhappy and unthankful people that live in my apartment building. Well, that made the mother a little apprehensive, and she said, what do you mean? Uh, why do you think they're not very thankful and they're unhappy? She said, well, it sounds to, he said, well, it sounds to me like the woman upstairs lies on the floor and sobs a great deal. In the unit below, the woman and her child always seem to be yelling. The man beside me beats his head on the wall often for long periods of time. Her mother was shocked. And she could hear the anguish in her son's voice. She said, I hope you stay away from those people. Don't associate with them in any way. He said, don't worry, mother. I'll just continue to stay in my room and practice my bagpipes. <laughs> I don't care. I thought that was funny, but uh, <laughs> oh, you guys are all waiting for some big, big truth there. It wasn't coming, was it? Well, one of the indicators of the last days is that men will be unthankful. It's really interesting. I mean, talk about lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy. Boy, that, that being unthankful is in with a, a great list of what would be considered works of the flesh and things that we would not want to be named with, but it seems like we, we, we're okay with being unthankful. But the command is very clear, be ye thankful. It's easy to forget. We talk about the ten lepers that got healed in the Bible. And you remember how many came back to say thanks? One. Now, I don't think, I, I don't think that the other nine were, were not thankful. I think they probably were grateful they were healed. But they didn't take the time to come back and say thank you. We've all been guilty. Have you not been guilty of, of being something done for you or somebody been nice to you and you're really grateful for what's happened and you're thankful but you never took the time to write a note, to publicly thank them or to personally express gratefulness or thankfulness to them. And it wasn't that you weren't grateful but you didn't take the time to express it. And I think that was probably the case of some of these lepers that were healed. But the truth is, for the, for the Christian, 
thankfulness is not, you know, a week from tomorrow we'll have Thanksgiving Day. But, the, but it, it, for the Christian, it's not a day. It's supposed to be a lifestyle. Uh, the, the truth is we, we'd probably be better off to have one day where we call it, you know, complaining day and have, get all your complaints and gripes and everything out of the way than the other 364 days have Thanksgiving. It seems like it's the other way around and we complain all the other days and we do one, one day set aside to give Thanksgiving. But we're to be thankful. Thank, our, thanksful, our thankfulness to God is to be a lifestyle. It's supposed to be the way we live. Hebrews reminds us we're to give uh, thanks to God continually. It's the sacrifice of thanksgiving to God continually. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, the psalmist said. Into his courts with, with praise. Be thankful unto him. We can thank him for our life. Thank him for certainly for eternal life. For it's, listen, in, in Christ we live and move and have our being. If it weren't for him, we wouldn't have life. Jesus said that I've come that you might have life. You might have more abundantly. I, I notice, and in, in, in oftentimes when you go to countries that don't have God, you know, she, she mentioned that, that the, the God of the, uh, 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 of the, of the country, the, the, the God of Islam is an angry and a merciless and, a, and, a, and that kind of a God. You know what? Our God is not like that. Amen. And thank God for that. See, be thankful that we, we have a God that says, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And so I'm thanking God for life and thank you for the inheritance we have. Hey, we're heirs of God and we're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. That's, you talk about exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think. Hey, just the fact we're inheritors, just the fact we're in the will, it is a pretty, pretty big thing. But then he says, no, you're not just in the will. You're joint heirs with my son. <laughs> that's, that's amazing to me. And we ought to be thankful for what God has done for us. Colossians 1.12 says, Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Our thanksgiving causes the grace of God to be magnified. And that the Bible says it redounds to the glory of God. Redound simply means it gives credit to the glory of God. It's for His glory when we give thankfulness. Colossians 2 and verse 7, Rooted and built up in Him, established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. It's our lifestyle. It's different than the world. It's different than those who know not Christ. We see things differently, we live differently, and we live in praise and thanksgiving for what God has done for us. We can only so live when we have the peace of God in our heart. That's what Colossians 3 says. Notice, let the peace of God rule in your heart, to which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Hey, I'm thankful that the peace of God rules in my heart. It's, it's, we, um, <laughs> I, I guess I'll say this. We, uh, we're, we're remodeling. Well, I shouldn't say we. We're, we're having the kitchen remodeled. And they tore out all the cabinets. They tore out, when they tore out all the cabinets, your kitchen sink goes with it. There's just two uh, pipes sticking up. Well, apparently last night, and, and it's about quarter of nine or about 20 to nine, and Andy was downstairs, he came up and he said, you know, water's coming through the ceiling. And they didn't, Brother Don, they didn't cap those pipes off. And all day long, it's just been dripping, we didn't know it. And three different patches underneath there and water coming down. I said, oh boy, okay. So my son-in-law's down and he says, okay, you got to go get shark something, you know, to cap them off. And, and so I go and I text the guy from Lowe's who was doing it and I said, I took pictures I showed him. I said, water coming through, dripping in our, you know, uh, basement. I said, I am not pleased with this. Okay? And uh, he called. <laughs> and uh, says, I'm on my way. Okay? But meanwhile, we got to go to Lowe's. And, you know, I'm, let's, just, let's just say this, okay? We'll, we'll move on and I'll finish the story. I am not Mr. Fix-It. Okay? Is that good? All right? We good enough with that? And uh, so... 
I go in Lowe's and find these, these two shark, whatever they're called, to uh, cap off these pipes. And, and I got to, you know how hard it is to find someone to help you at Lowe's at, when they close in 10 minutes? Hmm? They're all hiding behind things, you know, so they don't have to help you, you know. <laughs> Sorry, Lawrence, you weren't there. But, uh, you know, I'm like, hello, seriously. I, but once I, I found the caps, then, then the guy texts me and says, you need to get a half-inch pipe cutter, you know, or my tools are somewhere else. They, okay, great, where do I find the half-inch pipe cutter? You know, I'm in plumbing, so I figure, well, that might be a good idea. And, of course, no one's around. Seriously, I walked, well, we were all the way up to the checkout counter with the two things I was supposed to have to shut the valves off. I, I had those two things when he texted me to say, oh, go get the pipe cutter. So I had to leave everything there, walk back to the plumbing area. When I walk back there, no one's around. Seriously, Brother, brother Terry, I'm in Lowe's last night, Brother Lawrence, at, at t about 5 till 9 now. Hello? 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 Anybody here? Yeah, nobody. Nobody's answering me. I think they're ducking behind refrigerators and washing machines and everything. But I finally, I, I cornered one guy, and he walked down, and we're looking. We can't find it. And this guy texts me. He says, it's aisle 31, bin 16, or something like that <laughs> at the other end of the store. So I walk all the way down to there. And guess what's there? Nothing but straps you tighten down when you have a load on your car. It's not the right aisle. And the lady said, and finally a lady, she was on the other side and said, hey, hey. She looked through there. <laughs> I said, can you help me? Okay. She came over and she goes, no, nah, they're not here. We don't have anything like that in, in tools. That's over in plumbing. <laughs> Trying to walk back down to plumbing and, and, and get it down there. And, and listen, all, I'm saying all that to say this. I, I got up to the checkout thing. It's nine, about 10 after 9 now. And I spent a wonderful 20 minutes in Lowe's walking back and forth. And the policeman was up there, they, a policeman at closing time, I guess. And he was relating to my wife. He said, man, if that was happening to me or if that had happened to my wife, she would be screaming right now. And it was a testimony to him that my wife wasn't screaming. I didn't say I wasn't screaming. I said she wasn't screaming. <laughs> and back my wife, you know, I'm like, come on, get this stuff. I'm, you know, uh, about, when it gets to be about 9.30, I'm about 20%. You know, my battery says like 10%. You know what I mean? It's about gone. And, and, and my wife is like, oh, oh, here. And she's grabbing tracks out of my pocket. Here, here, come to, come to church, come to church, you know. And uh, just, just all excited. What an opportunity, you know, to come and talk to these people. And, like, wow, that's, she's a better Christian than I am, okay, uh, no doubt about it, but it was uh, saying, you know what, in everything give thanks, this the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you, be ye thankful, do those words challenge you at all, be ye thankful, it's, it's easy to be thankful when we like what's going on. It's not so easy to be thankful when we don't like what's going on. And, and, and that's a more difficult thing. But be ye thankful. The word thanks or something similar to that or is mentioned over 150 times in the Bible. And when it's mentioned, usually we're either exhorted to give thanks or people are giving thanks or people are being rebuked because they have not given thanks. Are they not thankful? I want to ask you, who are we to be thankful to? Well, the Bible says, first of all, we're to be thankful to God through Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 20. The Bible says this, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm giving thanks to God. We don't we don't thank our lucky stars. Okay? You don't thank Mother Nature. Okay? You give thanks to God. All right? You give thanks to Him. We don't give thanks to, the, to, to, to those kind of things. We're giving thanks to God through or in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we also give thanks to other people that help us. You don't have to turn there, but jot down Romans 16. Romans 16, the whole chapter is Paul thanking the people that have helped him. 
giving thanks to his co-laborers and thanks to his co-workers. Jesus thanked the woman who anointed his feet with her perfume, remember, with the expensive ointment, and wiped them with her tears and with her hair, and he said, this will be spoken of her as a memorial for all generations. So we, it's okay to give thanks. When we start to give, listen, when we're grateful to others, it will eventually, it will lead us back to being grateful to God. Because who places those people in our life? God does. God does. So it always comes back to God. Now, let me, let me just uh, finish this for you tonight and talk about why be thankful. Why be thankful. The psalmist said in Psalm 35, verse 18, I'll give thee thanks in the great congregation. I will praise thee among much people. So we're, we're encouraged throughout the Bible to give thanks and to be thankful. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, and everything give thanks. It didn't necessarily say for everything, but it did say in everything. Give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And, and when it talks about giving thanks, that is, in that continual sense, like we talk about asking and, and, and seeking and knocking. That's not just a one-time thing. It's ask and ask and ask and keep on asking and seek and seek and seek and keep on seeking. Well, give and give and give, give thanks and give thanks and give thanks and give thanks and keep on giving thanks. That is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. And so learn to give thanks. Continual thing. We give thanks unto the Lord. Let me give you several reasons. Number one, because it pleases the Lord. It pleases God. The, uh, that's clearly God's will. He said, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. Somebody says, oh, I wish I knew God's will. Well, I know one part of it. Give thanks in everything. You can do that. I can do that. That's not a mystery. That's not hard to figure out. And, and 1 John chapter 3 and verse 22 says, and we know that, that he hears us because we keep his commandments and we do those things that are pleasing in his sight you want to be certain that God will hear your prayer then obey his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight would it please God that we're thankful absolutely in fact it, it's it's what he's told us it's what his will is and he delights when we do his will he desires that we do his will and he is he does not have his great delight remember what uh, Samuel said to Saul when he uh, wanted to sacrifice after the Amalekite caper where, where he thought he'd hang on to the best stuff when he was supposed to totally get rid of everything. Hath the Lord his great delight in sacrifices and burnt offerings as in obeying the voice of the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. Saying, listen, what God delights in is your obedience to him. And God says, my will is that you give thanks. Why do you think he put that story of the lepers in the Bible? To remind us that we ought to make sure we take the time to give thanks. That we take the time to express our thankfulness to God. You don't have to, you, you ever have the opportunity, and I hope you'll pay attention when people come from other countries. You know, uh, Brother Yoder and I had been in the Philippines, and, and, uh, and, and more so when he's in India, and especially in the remoter areas, when, when you're in some of the big cities, it's, it's, it's sort of westernized, you know, and uh, we, we stayed in a nice motel, and it was very nice, and they had breakfast included and all that kind of stuff, and uh, it, but you go out into where the people live, and you go into their houses, you begin to understand how blessed we are in America, how, 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 how abundantly blessed we are. And, and so, give thanks and, and let God know that you're thankful, uh, that you haven't, listen, there's a difference between an obedient heart and a thankful heart. You know, you can obey and still have a cold heart. You can obey on the outside but not be obedient on the inside. When you were growing up and your parents told you to do something, you, you, you may have done it, but you didn't really want to do it on the inside. But you obeyed outwardly. But you know what? When you're thankful, a thankful heart cannot be a cold heart. A thankful heart is a warm heart. 
Obedience is reasonable service. Thankfulness is always giving from the heart. So it pleases the Lord. That's why we're thankful. Number two, it not only pleases the Lord, it proclaims our gratitude. When Jesus cleansed those ten lepers, only one came back to say thank you for the miracle of being cleansed. You know, that's only one out of ten. That's ten percent being thankful to God. And I wonder if, if we just, you know, I, I think about my own life. If somebody followed me around or if we followed you around for a week and just recorded everything that you said and everything that came out of your mouth, how much would be thankfulness? Would 10%? Be thankfulness? I wonder how many out of, out of people, I remember I was reading when I was preparing for this message, uh, there was some kind of a game show where everybody who came in, they were giving them a, a box of candy. And they were waiting for the person to said thank you and they were going to give him an additional $500. And they got to the seventh person before somebody said thank you. And they got the $500. Then, yeah, you know what happened then? Everybody wanted to say thank you. Yeah. Well, too late now. But you understand how, how, how grateful are we? It, it, it proclaims our gratitude to God. Isn't it, a, isn't, it a, isn't it a sad commentary on our sinful nature? That God, who has forgiven us and cleansed us and, and freed us from sin has to remind us to be thankful to Him. That's a, that's a poor commentary on, our, on us. That He would have to remind us to be grateful to Him for what He's done for us. After all He's done for us and the life He's given to us, we ought to make it a, a, a lifestyle of being thankful to Him. You see, saying thank you, someone said saying thank you shows our dependence on someone else. We don't, we don't have it naturally. How many, do, how many have small children? How many have small children? You might even have big children. What do you have to teach them? When you give them something or someone gives them something, what do you say? Yeah, you, you, you tell them, what do you say? Hmm? And you have to, what are you trying to teach them? Say thank you. Why? They don't naturally say that. Here, you want this? Yes. <laughs> and away they'll go. You have to say, no, wait, wait, wait. What do you say? Say thank you. We're, we're teaching us that. It's not in our nature to be that way. So you don't have to, you don't always have to feel it to do it. You do it, and you do it, and you'll begin to feel it. You won't be thankful without eventually feeling better about it. So it proclaims our gratitude, it pleases the Lord. Number three, it provokes others. And I'm not, I don't mean provoke in a bad way. I mean provoke in a good way. Uh, Hebrews 10 and verse number 24. Would you look there for a minute? Hebrews 10 and verse number 24. Notice the Bible says, Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. That, that word provoke there it simply means to, to incite or to stir somebody up to do what is right. Let's stir each other up to love and to good works for the Lord. That, that, that encourages other people. You know, when you're thankful, it's contagious. It'll catch on. And other people will be thankful. You encourage other people by being thankful for what they did and then it encourages them and I think God's honored when that happens so if someone helps you thank them thank them for helping you and and express that gratitude to them if someone needs encourage encouragement then give them some encouragement and that'll cause them to give thanks to God haven't you ever been encouraged by somebody? And later on you thought, God, thank you for bringing that person in my, my life today. Thank you for having them cross my path today. I, I was helped by them. Thank you. See, by you thanking them causes you to want to give thanks to God. 
God does that for you and me. Jesus, you know, I was thinking about, look at, look at John chapter 9, would you please? What happens in John chapter 9 is a blind man is, is healed miraculously by Jesus. This fellow was born and his disciples wanted to know who sinned, this man or his parents. He was born blind and Jesus said in verse 3 of chapter 9 of John, Neither this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. And, and then Jesus said some other things. In verse 6, when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground, made clay of the spittle. He anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which had been by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him, it was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? And some said, Well, this is he. Others said, He's like him. But he said, I am he. And they said unto him, How were thine eyes open? He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay, anointed my eyes, and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received sight. And they said unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. And of course they brought him to the Pharisees, and it was a Sabbath day when Jesus did it, and so the Pharisees are upset. And, and it ends up, they want to kick this guy out of the synagogue. They're going to they're gonna excommunicate him. Okay? And they call his parents in, and they want to get them involved. Is this your son? Is this what happened to him? And mom and dad said, well, he's old enough. Ask him. Keep us out of it. And, and eventually they... They, they said, we know this guy's a sinner and you shouldn't have anything to do with him. And, and so, and he said to the Pharisees, this is great, verse 30. Notice what he said to the Pharisees. He answered and said to them, Herein is a marvelous thing that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened my eyes. You guys are supposed to be spiritual leaders and you don't even know who this guy is and he can do miracles. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. And since the world began... Uh, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were of God, he could do nothing. Then answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And what's the last sentence say, church? They cast him out. They threw him out. Now they don't want him. Okay, he's blind. He's not sure if his family even wants him now. In fact, if they associate with him, they'll be cast out. So now nobody cares about him. Nobody, nobody uh, wants him. But look at verse 35. Jesus heard that they cast him out. And when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Cast out everybody else. And who... Listen, who went looking for him? Jesus did. He found him. He went searching for him. Hmm? Aren't you glad he searched for you? Amen. Aren't you glad he found you? Is it, oh, I found him. No, you found you. The shepherd's looking for the sheep. The sheep wasn't looking for the shepherd. He found you. And so he found it very kind, very encouraging. That's the kind of Savior we have. That's the kind of God we serve. And he's good and he's gracious to us. So we give thanks because it pleases the Lord. It proclaims our gratitude. It provokes others. And it, number four, it produces contentment. As we're thankful to God for what he has given to us, we become more contented with what is already ours that he's given to us. Would you, you know what will help you with Christmas coming? Refuse to live restlessly. Refuse to live restlessly. This all, all the advertising will be, you, 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 you got to have this new and proved this or that, or you got to have this, or your kids got to own this, or they got to have this newest thing. Everybody wants the newest, newest and the best thing that comes out. The Bible says in Psalm 92 verse 1, is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. And it is a good thing. Give thanks in every situation, the good and the bad. Don't forget, even trials. Remember Sunday night, James? Even trials are for our good. Even trials 
accomplishes God's purpose in our life and His will in our life. So don't, don't just, uh, don't, when, when the trial comes, don't just say, God, get me out of this. Don't say, God, accomplish what you want to in this. Teach me what I need to learn in this. Even, you know, we, we've gotten away from that in our society, but even pain sometimes is good. We learn things from pain. And it, they, they don't say anymore, and Brother Yoder, you remember the days they used to say, when, when it came to physical workouts, remember what they used to say? No pain, no gain. Oh, they don't like that anymore. They don't want to, oh no, if there's any pain, you stop, you know. And uh, you go into the doctor, well, you got any pain? Oh, they got any pain, they want to throw a pill at you. Pain teaches things to us. Not all pain is bad. Someone says we can be thankful for the things that we did not get that we wanted. Sometimes we wanted something and we've asked God and we didn't give them to us and we're thankful he didn't give them to us. But be thankful also for the things you, that you didn't get that you didn't want. Well, I, I didn't want to get sick. Well, you didn't, so praise God. I didn't want to get audited. Well, you didn't, so praise God. Okay. I didn't want to lose my job. Well, you didn't, so praise God. Think about it. Be grateful. It produces contentment in our life. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Number five. We're thankful because it portrays Christ. It makes us more like Jesus. You know, you can read through the Gospels and you'll find, there's a couple scriptures I think I listed there for you. Luke 10, 21 and John eleven forty one. 41. In, in Luke chapter 10 and verse number 21, this is when uh, the 12 came back uh, the, the 70 rather came back after going out and they, they talk about how they, they, they uh, the devils are even subject to us in your name. And Jesus said that I give unto you power in verse 19 to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any man hurt you. Not, notwithstanding in this rejoice not. The spirits are subject unto you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And then look at verse 21. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit and said, what did he say, church? I thank thee, O Father, O Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto the babes. Even so, Father, for it so it seemed good in thy sight. Giving thanks to God. But then he did it over in John chapter 11 too. And John 11 is when he's at Lazarus' grave, calling him out from the dead. And there in chapter 11 of John, in verse number 41, they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. Jesus looked up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Again, before he ever prayed and said, Lazarus, come forth, he gave thanks to God in front of all the people. Jesus was continually giving thanks to God. You say, oh, I'd like to be like Jesus. Well, then be thankful. Give thanks to God for things. Don't take things for granted. Don't be unthankful. Un means without. Without thankfulness. Okay? Let's be ye thankful. When you're unthankful, you're in good company. The, the folks in heaven in, in Revelation 4 and also Revelation 7, they're giving thanks to God for all eternity. So really, when we begin to give thanks now, we're just practicing for heaven. <laughs> we're, just, we're just getting ready, so it's not going to be a shock to us when we get there. We'll be able to continue to give thanks to him. Let me close with this. I, I was reading. These are some reasons you ought to be thankful for what you have. There's more than 660 million people in, who live on less than $2 a day. There are more than 385 million people who live on less than $1 a day. There's 1.4 million children that die each year from a lack of access to safe drinking water and adequate sanitation. 
15 million children are orphaned due to HIV and AIDS. 870 million people worldwide do not have enough food to eat. Worldwide, about 425 million children do not have safe water to drink. A quarter of all humans live without electricity. 1.6 billion people. About 2.5 billion people in the world do not have access to adequate sanitation. That's two-fifths of the world's population. An estimated 1.2 million children are trafficked worldwide every year. In developing countries, approximately 130 million children or teenagers aged 17 and under have lost one or both parents. About 1.8 million people, most of them children, die annually of preventable foodborne diseases. About 130 million of the world's 15 to 24 year olds cannot read or write. And worldwide, 126 million children work in hazardous conditions, often endure beatings, humiliation, and sexual violence by their employers. The article ended by saying this. Now what was it you were complaining about? No wonder the Lord reminds us. Be ye thankful. We shouldn't need reminded. We shouldn't have to have a command. But since he's given us it. And he's told us over 150 times in the Bible. May we ought to take it up on it. May we ought to be thankful. So the, the, the word to our church, the word to us, not just for Thanksgiving, but for all, all the time, for all year. Be ye thankful. Let's stand together for prayer, shall we? Father, take the truth now this evening. Thank you, Lord, for the clear commands of the Bible. Thank you, Lord, for telling us what you desire that we be. Not just to, to give thanks, and to have thanksgiving, but to be thankful. We are human beings. It ought to be just part of what we are. That we would be thankful for all you've done for us. And so Lord, help us each one to take time to count our blessings. Name them one by one. And then carefully give you thanks for all that you have done. We love you. Thank you for being a good God who does good things in our life. Thank you again for Ruth. And Lord, we're praying your blessing on the project that she's desiring to accomplish. And Lord, it would be so wonderful to see these people be able to receive your word in their language. They know there's a God in heaven who loves them. Enough to send his son to die for them that they might receive forgiveness of sins. Lord, prosper her way. Prosper this project. And raise up many more like it. That we could reach this world with the good news of Jesus Christ. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.